here I am in the lovely village of Roxton, just outside Chelmsford. Um, I've been given a, given a commission to paint this lovely church behind me. Um, it's um, not a subject, uh, it's, it's more easier to paint um, in the winter when we've got no leafing. But once you get leafing on trees, then it does cause uh, a little bit of blockage. Um, so you can't see the shape of the church correctly but um, all being well I can get this down onto watercolour paper and I'm going to show you how to do that well there we have the view um, lovely old church St Michael's and All Angels in Roxwell uh, lovely view and I've now just put that down onto my watercolour paper there you have it um, so really just hone in a little closer we need to uh, thinking about get some thinking about the colours and putting a bit of uh, life into this scene well there you can see the drawing um, not an easy drawing I must admit uh, it, um, was a bit of more difficult than uh, than I uh, than some subjects, but there you go. That's what uh, watercolour painting is all about. Um, now I'm going to put the first washers down. So I'll just put my gloves on because they're a little chilly. Picking up my materials. It's a little bit windy too. Uh, you may see the board jump around a little bit. Well, I hope that's not too off-putting. Okay. Well, the first thing I need to do. Is to get some colour down now it's quite a nice day but the problem is the sun is coming from the wrong direction so I'm gonna to have to improve on that anyway let's uh, get some paint on the paper uh, first thing I'm going to do is hold that still so you can see better I'm going to use ultramarine blue with a touch of Windsor blue so it's those two together that are going to give me my blue part of the sky. I think I'll have a blue sky today. I don't want anything too dramatic in this. Um, not strong blue um, to start. Now I'm going to put that there. We'll get a nice strong blue. I'm going to put some clouds in. Not too many, but a few. I'm going to weaken it a touch. Weaken this blue in places. Now that Blue is, that blue area is going to continue beyond and that's going to be weaker too so we're going to have a little bit of cloud there we are now I'm going to depict this as the sun's coming from the right hand side so to improve on that sky now I'm going to put some clouds in first thing I'm going to do is to put like a raw sienna very weak with a touch of light red just to get the weak tops of the clouds in so this is going to be the tops of the clouds but there's a little bit of sort of light tops to the clouds particularly on the right hand side a bit of red in there there we go and let that blend into the blue in places good now just before that dries I'm just going to soften one or two of these areas there there so we have some soft areas and some hard areas just to give a bit of life that's good now I'm going to paint in the undersides of those clouds and I'm going to use the blue with a little bit of red um, not too dark a bit more blue than red so let's see what we get with this there we are just before it dries the undersides a little bit of crispness to the tops of those clouds just go the other side there yeah, a real bit of life that's what we're looking to to introduce with all of, them, of these paintings really you know you, you want a bit of life into your your skies um, bit of 
real sort of depth and punch to them. Right, now as we come down, I'm going to weaken it, paint around, just see if we can pick around that tower, because it's vital that we try and do that, and just around that roof line. So we're leaving the white paper of the actual building itself. So that's always a good thing to do when you're painting. Crazy working my way down. Morning. Uh, gradually pro producing a uh, nice little feel to this. There we go. Down to that roof line there. Let's give it a nice sort of warm feel but with a bit of depth. Then as I come right down I'm going to introduce a bit more yellow in just to give the lower area that additional depth. And just before this right hand side dries I need to get a bit of the um, uh, the distant tree in but obviously being winter it's brown and not green so obviously we need to put that in like that just to make certain that we get enough need enough blue in there just to create that feeling of depth at that point so it's like a tree that's got a little bit of depth to it just pull it out like that a winter's tree there just bring up one or two tops that are a little um, fading up there good that's good now I'm going to put a bit of land for that building to sit on and that's just going to be, uh, it's, it's quite green, you know, even in winter you, you do get some nice warm greens. So, um, not too dark, and certainly not too dark too early. So we just wipe that away, like that. Going to pick around, well that's, that's an interesting thing, yeah, plenty of yellow in there. Going to pick around that, um, Those couple of gravestones I've introduced, um, not to put too many in, I don't think there's that many of them anyway. So, but um, notice I'm painting onto dry paper, so just gives that, that lovely feel to it. Uh, nice bit of depth there, another gravestone there, bring that up just before it dries. Well, that's pretty much the first washes to this lovely um, church scene. Well, it's beginning to dry. I can get in um, a bit of roof work at the moment. Um, light red, touch of burnt sienna. Um, I want to depict maybe a little bit of blue there, but I want to keep particularly this roof here, I want that roof to be of a, give a nice shine to it. So it needs to have enough red there to suggest a sunlit feel to the top of that roof. Lovely old chimney, pretty unusual I think to have that old chimney there and um, as I come down I'm introducing a bit of yellow into that just to ring the changes uh, put a bit in up top oh that's nice it's picked up a bit of other color there so that's always a good thing to have um, in your scene uh, at roof work if you're looking to paint roof work old tiled roofing um, a little bit of the um, uh, 
green goes in there, there's always a bit of moss on them. Um, this one then comes in uh, very, very similar. That comes in like that. Gonna have a similar tone to that. They do have a cap, which I'll put in later. There we are. The one at the back, that one there, is actually going to be a little less intense. I'm putting in some burnt umber. So as, you know, it, it sits back. Don't want it to dominate this one. So let's see what colour we've got. There we are, less intense colour. There is a capping on there that may very well be catching this sunlight. What you do to one side, do to the other. Now, so I'm leaving a bead of white for the capping along the top of there and along there. That's quite an important thing. Not vital. I mean, all these things are not vital, but in the end, they come together to produce the, a painting. You know, and it's something that um, it's always nice to learn. Um, as you paint. Um, these are things that I've found over the years um, that have actually happened to me and uh, I've always uh, decided that I'll try and remember to put them in uh, or leave them out as it were if that's the case. Because I always say in watercolour painting it's not always what you paint in more often than not what you leave out that is the important factor and you can always go darker but it's more it's harder to go lighter so that's another um, thing that uh, you should really remember now I'm just going to put some base color onto the walls um, to start with I do note that we have which a lot of these churches do have quite a, a, a yellowy um, um, surround to all those windows oh and there is a window here that I haven't actually drawn in so I'm just going to put the surround it it's a secondary window so it's not of any great um, significance really but um, you know and um, there we go a surround there to that one. There you are. Uh, there is a surround to to the door. There, it's looking good. Maybe a bit of a step there too. So best to always get these um, these areas in first. Um, is a bit down here. Oh, there's a buttress there. Well, I must remember to put that in, um, which is quite important. And the window surround to that window and the pillar in the centre. There you go. And that's, that's it. There we go. And that's also another area there. One or two people around the village this morning, uh, although we're not quite out of lockdown, um, obviously people trying to get about a little um, just to um, try and break up their weekend after another long weekend uh, indoors presumably. Um, but social distancing all the time so that's uh, that doesn't cause me any great problems. Good, so that's that. Oh, and there's also a, that chimney has got this type of colour. A um, little bit of this colouring down those buttress areas. A um, little bit onto these gravestones. A couple of smaller gravestones there little bit there. Notice how I'm not being too fussy with this. It's vital that you don't make these uh, areas too much of a fuss. 
Good. Let's let that dry. Well, the wind is getting up, and I um, hope that doesn't spoil um, my uh, speech on the mic of this camera. Um, right, next thing I'm going to do is to suggest a little bit of um, like stonework because it's all um, flint and pointing, really. This church, but obviously, you know, we need to put in a little bit of the uh, or hint at that, really, you know, all the flint work. And so, we need to leave white paper, but we also need to put in some colouring. So that's the way we do that. Not a difficult thing to do, as I always say, you know, it's the simplicity that it's the, what really creates the, the scene and the, and the view. Itself. Of course, it's shadows too, but you've got to get the tones right before you start. Just one thing I, I just need to put in, and that's the, um, the lovely roof of that porch. Lovely porch there. Put that in really strong, not that strong, but strongish red because it's quite important that that shows quite nicely the overhang of the roof line there. And then I'm now I'm going to put in the overhang of the roof line there. To there, there. Um, notice how I've gone in fairly dark with that. will be behind there but that mustn't be too dark when you paint buildings behind what will be a tree you need to be a little careful with the colour good okay right just gonna do the spire now now that is tile at the top and my favourite tile colour is Windsor Blue and well Indian red not too much red otherwise you end up with um, with a really dark color and as well for the whole board stem um, my easel is not the best of easels for windy conditions didn't I only brought me a little light one today which um, is a bit of a, a problem, but there you go. There we are, that's the cap. Um, we'll deal with the wind vane very, very shortly. Uh, now we've got the roof there, like that. Potentially this is the darker area. But I'm not actually that dark with it. Um, now I'm going to go a little bit lighter. So we're going to hold some more water in that. Just blend that down. And then even lighter still. There. There we are. We begin to see the form and shape of that. And then the other part is wood. So I'm going to use just burnt umber really with a touch of winter blue which gives it slightly greeny brown uh, let's put a bit of, let's put a bit of red in that a bit of Indian a light red let's put a bit of a light red in tending to do the dark sides first because um, if I am a little dark I'll still have a bit of red in there if I start, I can always put shadows on, but if it's too dark to start, then it's a job to make it lighter again. Uh, but there's a nice bit of done. The mix and palette has blown shut. Enjoy this painting perhaps. The achievement, or the sense of achievement you feel, if it all comes off, 
is immense but uh, unfortunately to get that feeling you have to go through quite a bit of sort of pain as it were um, but as they say no pain no gain that's the term that's used in the modern language right a little bit lighter on the sunlit sides still a wood color like that and we've got the slats there as well that will all show up when we get to shadow in there good 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 it's looking pretty good to me I just want to use a smaller brush here to paint in the porch because I need to get that in I'm not going to complete the painting here um, I'm going to complete the painting um, back in my studio um, sometimes I do that sometimes I don't uh, but in this case I think I will <laughs> Not for any particular reason, really, but it's just that uh, just feel um, that I can probably analyse um, the complete scene better. Um, just got to get this door in um, and the sections so as we can uh, determine where we are with that. good then we'll just soften that at the lower part there's a door on there but it's uh, blended in yep and this door as well um, there's a door here as well which is a nice sort of door there good well I think we can safely say that I have enough material down um, to take back to take back into the studio and um, see if I can uh, improve on this lovely old church in Roxwell on the outskirts of Chompsford. Well, I've returned to my studio, um, got all my paint sorted, my normal setup um, to complete a lovely old church that I've just been visiting. And I started this, as you know, plein air. Now I'm going to finish, while it's still fresh in my mind, I'm going to finish it back here in the studio. When you get to this sort of stage of a painting, there are really one element, one main element of this of the building missing, and that is the uh, windows. So that has got to be the first area that I start with back here in my studio, and I'm going to use ultramarine for that, and. <clears throat> Why there's a pause, I'm just thinking. That's the reason. Um, trying to change the mixes a little, just to give a bit of variety. Ah, and I'm going to use cadmium red. Here we are. To give me my dark colour for the windows. Now, initially, I've got it to be. It's like a bluey colour, but not too blue. Let's see what we get. Um, I'm not going to be too heavy with that window there. Uh, this one has got to be put in sort of fairly simply. I'm leaving the, um, the separate sections in between each pane of glass unpainted. So that will denote the frame if 
you notice I'm not being too fussy you know that's a little bit thicker than the other one and you know there's a bit of it's it's not it's not an exact science and best bet is to not treat it in too much of a form um, you know too much of a fuss really um, you know it's to me these windows have got to be quite impressionist rather than just suggestive rather than um, the complete um, detail at all we're not into detail I'm just going to give a rough idea of this now this window will be behind that tree so that's you know so I've even been less fussy with that one now the dark color I'm to this mix I'm going to add burnt umber because I want to get a nice really dark color for the sections between the louvers on the belfry louver and I've left some little light patches here and there so all it needs just simple suggestion and I'm not even counting the number that I have I'm just I am thinking about perspective that is for certain I'm thinking about a possibly a sill on there um, but that's so all I'm thinking about there I'm just going to go back to that original mix because these areas are glazed but the glazing is quite um, well, I don't know whether you'd see those well there you go Never mind. So anyway, that's our windows in. We've got the doors there. I mean, obviously, we need detail. Uh, one other thing that we need, a couple of other things that we need. Um, we really need to be looking. Let's just get that bit of hedging in. Uh, winds are blue. And... Burnt sienna. There we are. I'm going to use this same brush. That lovely old hedge there. It's quite a formal, it's well trimmed. Quite a formal hedge. Finishes somewhere about there, I believe. That was more or less the sort of idea. Runs out of picture. A little bit of perspective in that just to give a feeling that it tapers a tad. That's all you need to do, you know. It really is totally unfussed um, sort of arrangement, really, when you paint these areas in. Going back to the dark colour again for the supporting area there where the weather vane will be. Shall I put the weather vane in? Yeah, maybe. Best to get that in now. Burnt Sienna. Fairly strong mix, not too weak. Um, just a straightforward weather vane, really. The normal church veins that you see. Just like that. Quite sufficient. No need to be fussy over these. Now, as I say, when I was there this morning, the light was coming from the left and round the back. I'm going to treat this as an evening light where the light will just be catching the front um, because I didn't want all of the um, um, main parts of the building in shadow I want the secondary parts the gable ends the the the, um, um, the windows um, um, catch the light um, well that one does and, uh, and we've got a nice shadow down the tower so that's the reason for that okay right that's that in now I'm going to put in a little bit of tree work I'm going to put in the distant tree work first for that I'm going to use burnt umber 
winds are blue but this time it's not going to be green so the winds are blue is going to be less a part, lesser part of the mix and I'm going to put in these lovely old trees as I sort of remember it uh, this morning it's quite a quite a large feature and that one was quite a distinct sort of tree really and it will be quite dark so you know I want to go dark enough with this because it is away from the light that's the um, that's the key you know it, it, it really is quite a almost in silhouette although not really in silhouette but that, that sort of a impression um, and these trees should be put in fairly fairly simply you know we're not going to get into um, and of course there are branches that are in us in coming off the trunk down this area so you will see some a smaller some smaller branches heading off like that that go behind the church that head off behind there um, some come down and pass across the back you'll have some more uh, sections coming out here and some of those will hang down and once you get to the smaller branches you can start putting them in sort of fairly loosely and freely and as I say some of the branches actually hang down which is always um, a nice um, thing to depict it really is a, a massive well, massive quite large tree that's running up like that and I would suggest when you're learning you don't put too many um, let's just remove that that didn't work out so if you make a mistake get some water lightly damp it and remove remove most of the, the colour uh, lightly damp it there we are and once that dries I'll go over that again um, as I say it's um you know you don't want to put too many branches in at this point it's got to, you know the tree has got to be believable but um, you can always add more my old favorite saying add more but you can't take it away times of overdone the branches in trees some of them will be lighter than others so and some will be coming off the front some coming off the back of the tree and I think that's pretty sufficient for what we need I'm going to put the small branches in shortly uh, and I'll show you that technique in a moment now this I'm going to now improve on because I just made a little bit of a mistake there but that's easily rectified there we are that's good now while I have this color I'm going to go back in to the brown with a little more winds of blue and I'm adding a bit of cadmium yellow to that so it's going to be a dark green and that is for I think it's like a large well it's a job to see um, the position I was standing but we're going to treat it as a sort of a more open sort of a bush like that coming in I'm going to leave that nice bit of depthy area there and then just on the underside and the left hand side I'm going to go a little bit darker because that was nice to be sort of pick up a bit of depth of colour the outer edges there we are good now we may as well finish that background tree off 
Now the branches and trunk areas are dry. And we'll finish it off with a flat brush, lightly damped with some burnt sienna and raw sienna. to suggest, see the way I'm dragging down burnt sienna, raw sienna, with a, a, a dry, what I'd class as a dry brush technique. Now see the way the hairs of that brush have opened up. Too much water in there, they wouldn't do that, so you need to be aware that too much water and you can't get that effect. And the bit of yellowing in there gives the tree a sense of um, light breaking through those smaller twig areas that you see in the winter. Yeah. And that to me is the best way to suggest small twig areas on your winter trees yeah. and, and, and the word is suggest you know it's a, it is a suggestion of winter trees I think that's fine let's just go a little darker there's a little bit of burnt umber in there just to darken off Give it, give it a bit of warmth in places. Don't overdo this. Very, very delicate. Right, we'll call that a day. Good. Now, we're going to put in... We're getting there, really. You know, it's... There are bits and bobs to do, but we are getting there. Okay, let's sit back and analyse what we need, where we need to go next. Okay, well the next area will be, let's get that large tree in on the left hand side. I'm going to use a round now, but I'm going to use the same mix. Uh, burnt Umber, Windsor Blue, well I'm using Burnt Umber, I used Burnt Sienna last time, I think. Or was it Burnt Umber? Doesn't really matter. Right, um, and I'm going to put some Indian Red in there because that will give me that bit of depth and warmth that quite often you see in these sort of very, very dark trees in the foreground. You give it a bit of punch and you get sort of a neutral sort of greeny grey. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to show let me show you what I'm going to do here regarding this. In the lower part, I'm going to damp the right hand side. Because what I want to do, when I paint this in, I want it to bleed over. And create a fern of light on the trunk area at that point. A bit more, a bit more red in there perhaps, give it a bit more of a brown feel. There we are, lovely and dark. So we take the main trunk first. I want to overload the brush. I want to be fairly dry. Remember these these old trunk areas. Right. Now I've gone to that they're quite wide in the lower area. Right. Now that damp area, all you do is take it that damp brush which you damped it and draw in the paint and all of a sudden you've got light on that trunk area in the lower part of that trunk now you've got another large area of trunk that comes off there that's why it's so meaty because it's actually all one 
Uh, I'm just stroking into that now to show a bit of um, the lower part root form. There we are. That's the way it's done. And then a bit more water, uh, a bit thicker there, goes right up, gradually gets narrower, but albeit it's quite a quite a bulky tree. And then we take this one as well. It's more or less going out of picture really. So you can't see a great deal of that, but you can see that it starts at that point there, which I think is quite important. Good. It's quite meaty. There we are. Now we take off this other, it's quite a large branch there. And that's hanging down. Another large branch there. That's it. Some more branches coming off from that. This is going to be quite big and uneven. Let's make it a little... Looked a little too good for my liking. Bring that down to get a soft feel. That outside, there we are. Right, now I turn to the smaller brush now because I need to paint the smaller branches, just mixing again, same three colours. Enough red in there to give me a, a sense of um, light. Right, now as we come away from the tree, these smaller branches come off of there and they really give a lovely Quite often you've got some little twiggy areas coming off these lower branches and some branches that are hanging down too. I'm putting all of these in before I attempt to put in shadows. Quite a large affair this tree. Um, just got to be a little aware of where all these branches are going because they've got to balance they've got to be in keeping with the tree um, you know oh, there's a nice another small branch just tapering off there mm -hmm. comes from the back of that one and then we've got Smaller branches now, some are heading down, some are curling up, heading off and up and down. Just thicken that just a touch more. There we are. Just add a bit more water to the brush. Want to get a it's quite a solid affair. That's it. And now I'm just having a little bit of fun getting some smaller branches in. And I'm probably going to put more in on this one because unlike the distance one, I'm not going to give this dry brush technique. I'm just going to paint in the branches so um, there we are good so that's the two trees in um, yeah that seems to be working a uh, bit of yellow now just to sit that tree on the grass like that that's good okay next will come just want to do a little bit more texture to the building. Now at the moment the building looks a little, um, it is a flint stone, but at the moment it looks a little too, so too uh, sort of clean. I'm going to do the shaded side as well. Just doing that here and there, just to suggest 
bit of sort of stony or flint work within the cemented areas. Good, that's sufficient for that. Just as a suggestion, that's all we need. Right, clean the brushes. Now I'm going to finish off the woodwork to the door frontage. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of guesswork, but um, I think I've pretty much got it as that was. There we are. So that shows the door. Like that. Yep, I think that's sufficient for the frontage of the door. Right, let's get some shadow work in. My favourite part is when the whole picture comes to life. Just before we do that, just noted something else. I'm going to use light red and burnt umber to create. We've got a ridge tile, and that's yet to be painted in. So I'm going to put that in. I could put it in right at the end, but I'm going to put it in now, like that. There's another one standing there. And that's why I left a bead of white, because you can see the light shining on that. Always a useful thing, gives it a bit of detail a bit of character nice and there we are stands up there nicely good now let's look at shadows going in with a number eight round and I'm going to paint in let's well first I'm going to use a number six um, Rosemary and Co series 344 four, because it's not quite as um, you know it's got a nice point the other one's lost its point and I'm going to use for the tower reflection the actual slated tower I'm going to use Prussian blue a Windsor blue and Indian red so the blue has got to dominate, but the red gives it a warming feel. So you've got a so like a blue ready slate effect. Now you've got that lovely little cap there. Then this thing comes down at an angle like that. This is the real shadow side of the slate. And it comes like that. It comes across there like that. Nice slate, shadow slate feel. I always remember there's overhang. See that overhang there? It's always an overhang, mostly an overhang anyway. Right, now I'm weakening that by adding more paint, sorry, more water. To create the next layer which is not quite as dark now I've left that bit because that will show even more light than that then I've added even more water to paint this sunny side like that and then that will have this lighter colour on, and so will that. So hopefully, we should be able to see the bands of shading within that tower. Up just a little higher than that. That looks pretty much, and just spreading that in a touch. Let's bring that around. 
that's it. Just giving it a bit of balance, really. OK, so that's that. Now we're looking at the bulk of the shadows. And for that, I'm going to use Prussian Blue and Cadmium Red. There we are. Look at that. Prussian Blue and Cadmium Red. Now that's an interesting shadow colour. be fairly dark mustn't be afraid to put in dark shadows it's going to give a bit more red to that or should I have more blue not sure about that let's put a bit more red in that there we are now that window will have a secondary shadow to that so I've got some little touches to put in later on this will have quite a deep shadow and it will come off at an angle because I intend or and there will be shadow down the side of that uh, that um, belfry uh, window that shadow will sneak up there like that up the roof and the good thing about watercolour is that potentially the underpainting shine through. Once it completely dries, the underpainting shines through. Now, going to have a little bit of shadow there, a little bit on that chimney at the top, and this is sectioned, I think. So what I need to do is just soften that now across the top down there, so as it completes that complete um, chimney. Now, leave that at that. We'll put some finishing touches on that shortly. Now we go in with the shadow work to that area there. That would also be in shadow. There will be some secondary shadows to come in. But at the pr present moment, I'm just looking at purely the main shadow work. Now we have a buttress there but in material that will create the shadow right into there anyway so I've opened that up for the buttress area. Now I'm going to put in quite a deep shadow from the overhang of that roof line because I would imagine in the winter uh, this time of year the sun is quite low then I'm going to put in the recessed shadow to the window so it's round the top down the right hand sides and all of a sudden those windows sit back um, favorite part of any building painting this now that roof will have a nice shadow and that will in turn cast a shadow across that area there as far as that buttress not going any further than that at this stage I don't believe it would be over that and I'm painting that Across there like that leaving the windows to allow light so you can see that there are windows there then we're going to paint in the overhang shadow there to the roof and the door shadow the recess there like that I love it gives, gives a nice nice sort of glow to that I think that seems to work quite well now there would be a shadow come across here onto the roof you do tend to get to know there's a right, okay so I'm talking to myself you do tend to get to know where 
these shadows would actually appear. Buttress area there, so that, but anyway, we're not worried about that. And then, of course, that door will have a recessed shadow. All the details can go in later. It's good. And although these shadows look very dark to start, you can see once they dry, the buttress area there, as I said, got to be aware of that. Um, as I say, when they dry, they do tend to lighten up considerably. And there's just a gravestone there. So that's something that we need to um, just paint around. Oh, and there's an overhang shadow there. Don't think we'd see any more than that. And then this, the end of the church is in shadow. So there's shadow there. And that is behind so in actual fact we do lose that area to that large tree and there as well just completely get rid of that good certain that heads off up so we know where that goes uh, yep yeah. yeah it's got a lovely feel to that i like that gives a lovely sunny glow to the whole thing now, while we have the brush loaded, we may as well paint the buttress areas like that. So it's down there, out and down. And one final one, now it's those two, this one is okay right we've got to show that in another way in a second um that we shall have to show in a different form and that we shall have to show in slightly different form but those are the two buttress areas there that's good now the left hand side of these gravestones like that and yes just the left hand side of that one Shows you the thickness, really. And we may as well put in the shadows that they cast while we're doing that. Good. Let's let those dry. And then we go and put in the finishing touches. Good. Okay, then. Well, it's my old favourite finishing touches. First thing I'm going to do is to show a deeper line there. I'm going to show um, a section there like that. But that's got to be in shadow. So I'll have to do that very shortly um, after it completely dries. But I'm just finishing off really now um, with some little touches along the ridge tile just to give an addition to that. There will be touches down the tiles, showing the thickness of the tiles there. And of course down there as well. Like that. We need to show these ones as well. I'm trying to do, get a feel of the day really. You know, and Every day is different when it comes to um, to painting outdoors. And that's why if you look at my work, you will see that, you know, hopefully, anyway, uh, that's the general idea that every day I paint, there's something different. You know, the colours are slightly different. You know, it, it it really um 
it under there. See where that helps to separate where the um, more water required, where the tiles sit. Like that, that's good. All of a sudden that's beginning to sharpen up everything. So when I say finishing touches, that's what I mean, the real sort of shadow sides of everything uh, on that windows there, a little bit of extra depth the, the, as a wood area, wooded area there. Um, oh, spread that through, that's good. Um, right in the point there. darker wood there, not too dark because it's actually in sunlight. Looks good, yep. Very suggestive of the whole thing. Just a little bit of this, not too much now as we go away from the light which is that bit there. Don't want to get too complicated with that because it sits behind that um, that tree so we only it's only a secondary feature really um right you are just before we go any further let's add a bit more depth to certain areas of these buttresses now tops of those buttresses there there are slightly tend to be of a slightly different stone So to depict that, I'm painting those in in a slightly different stone, really. Buttress area there. Um, boom, 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 boom. Buttress area there. And then there will be another one top of there. Slightly different stone. Probably more weathered more than anything. It loves, gives a lovely feel. Then of course we can go back in then with the shadow colour that I have just on the overhangs of those because they do overhang a touch so they will need to be shown to have shadow uh, boom 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 right there yep buttress overhang shadows yeah. Good. 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 I think that shows the the softness that I'm trying to achieve with that. I think that's it's got that. It, it, it is that sort of church. It's not really um, super sort of um, rich in colour. Really, I know you can often say, well depends on the light but that's the light I saw on the day so that's what I really want to depict now there is a couple of other little areas that I'm going back in with my detailed brush again under the sills there there is another small little area there that runs in a little area there there is a bit of uh, hinging to that door now that's what that is just suggestion nothing too fancy and then got a nice little bit of an ornate feel so then I'm going to put a secondary shadow to the reveal of that door there and I'm going to put a secondary shadow to the reveal of these windows just to give them a third dimension and a feeling of they have some sort of a lip seal on them so they all help
to bring the whole thing together. I don't know whether it's been out of focus for a while. Let's hope it uh, doesn't spoil your viewing. Um, and a little touch here and there on this will always um, won't go amiss. Just to show where that stands. A little chimney that's on top of the church itself. Good. Then, more or less, finally, a bit of greenery now. There's always a little bit of greenery along the base of these, um, where you get a bit of shadow. It just sits the, the building onto the ground, really. A little bit there, a little bit there, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. It's looking good to me. Good. Now, roofing, burnt sienna, point of the brush. Just show, just need that a little bit more wet than that. Just to show a feel of some sort of tire work. Occasionally you get areas of a that tend to show some of the tiles when the sun is very low in the winter, you know, and some little touches there. Um, one or two little touches here, but nothing too fancy at the back. It's all about the frontage, really. Then we have just a little section there. As we'll show that as well, even though it's in the shadow, you'll probably still see it. And uh, then we have, because it's a bordered area, you have little struts running across like that. Same in the shadow. I always put them in because they do add, give added detail. Just, it's all suggestive. It's nothing there that's really too, um, too powerful. Good. Now I'm going in with a secondary shadow which is directly underneath there like that. That's it. It's what I call a secondary shadow. Now, that's the main shadow that I've not put in, so I'll put that in now finally. Um, there is a secondary shadow under there. Same mix, but because you're doubling up the, the layers of colour, then... Um, it gives it uh, that extra dimension. Yeah. And then the secondary shadow from that um, lovely old buttress. And that would have a slight secondary shadow on it. Yeah. And these would have a casting shadow. Yes, mustn't forget those. Possibly a bit lighter than the shadow originally. But all be, it would be there. Good. Okay, right. Now I've just got to improve on foreground and that is Windsor Blue, Cadmium Yellow, quite a bit of Cadmium Yellow to start and I'm going to start off with that shadow, Cadmium in there, from that hedging there. Okay, 
Then we're going to have need two brushes here because we will need to soften. Um, right, you are. Right, where do we put these? Well, I want that to be in sunlight. So we sweep a nice shadow there. I'm going to soften parts of that, not all of it, but some of it. Like that. And this is the key to any real good watercolour painting. Well, in my book anyway, it throws light onto what would otherwise be a rather uninteresting sort of area of the picture. And we like interesting areas, just softening like that. A bit more blue, a bit more yellow, a bit more blue. Let's bang some real strong blue into that corner there just before it dries. And to there. There we are. Really brings that church into sunlight. And while we have this, I'm going to deepen with Prussian blue and Indian red, going to deepen the back edge of this tree. I just feel that needs a bit of light on that front there. I don't want to kill that completely. So that needs just dampening with a damp brush. So we've still got a little bit of light showing on that frontage there, that's it. Other than that, we're going to paint up into the lower part of this tree. To try and give that a real dark punch. Didn't quite have the punch and you can't always tell until you've actually put in other areas. You know, sometimes it's it's not until the end that you think yes it does need a bit of red going in there that's not bad but don't look too red there you go um you know all of a sudden you think oh it does need a more of a punch to that tree not necessarily right to the outer edges but certainly in the main part of the tree there and I think you will agree it does add an, an extra dimension to the whole thing which to be quite honest unless you really bite the bullet and do that then that's not going to uh, be quite as successful. And to the tops there, I'm just running in a little um, sense of um, sort of, well, whatever it is, sense of something. A bit more blue right in that corner. I always love to go very dark. My outer edges. Okay. Well, let's allow that to completely dry. There's just one area that I feel just needs another wash of colour. And that is some light red onto the roof of that front building. Now I've analysed it, just give that a little bit more colour. and leave one or two patches unpainted all of a sudden that brings that into a bit of extra gives it a bit of extra punch I think um, a bit more red just dropped in where it's wet so we've got a nice variety of this red colour like that 
Don't rub at the paper, just stroke the paint in. Good. Maybe just a small touch to this here as well. And go into the shadow. We'll go into the shadow with that, all dry back. And that's just going to have a weaker wash there. And that is to a certain extent, but not getting too fussed with that. Good, that's give it a bit more strength. Let's allow that to completely dry. Well, there's the finished painting. Um, quite pleased with that one. Uh, as you saw, went out and produced the drawing outside, produced the first washers, came home fresh in my mind. So I managed to put it down um, fairly quickly. Composition's good. Got this lovely dark tree just holding in the left hand side. Nice uh, tree in the in the middle distance there. And that lovely large tree stands up nicely at the back. Um, there was a, a, a bush tree there that I've actually moved out of picture, otherwise we wouldn't have seen uh, the porch. But other than that, um, not really changed a great deal. Um, one thing we need to do just before we finish, as I always say, always sign your work so let's sign up in this bottom left hand corner in my normal signature with the paint that's used in painting always the best thing to do there we are that tells everyone who painted it everyone should do that with their work well i hope you've enjoyed that Stay tuned to my YouTube channel and please subscribe by clicking clicking the logo in the bottom right hand corner um, to get uh, all my latest works. I'll be uploading more videos very shortly. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching and happy painting.